from Psalm 26, verses 1 through 8. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and have entrusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, in trying, as my heart and mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, and go around your altar. O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving, and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell, and the place where your glory abides. The word of the Lord. Second lesson is from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Know if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of St. Matthew, the 21st verse through the 28th verse. If, with your permission, even though I realize that people who put this, all these prickies together are much wiser than I, if I can just kind of go back to last week and then read to where we are now, because I think it's rather important. No less a Christian thinker than Paul Tillich says that the most important moment in all of human history happened on the road to Caesarea to Philippi. You remember that statement? Remember that when Jesus is there and he turns to his disciples after he's been out here for some three years and he says, okay, who do people say that I am? And they reel out that laundry list of a who's who of Israel's prophets. And some say you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead, decapitated. Think about that a second and it's what's been going on recently in Iraq. And he says also that Elijah, Elijah, and the argument is this, that before the kingdom of God would break into the world, thank you for the water, thank you for the water, before the kingdom of God would break into the world, God was going to make it so that everyone would know. He would bring together the most common of all speakers, and they prepare. So they're literally saying, Jesus, everybody's saying, you are a forerunner. And that the kingdom was about to come in. Then comes the salient question, doesn't it? And then Jesus turns to them and says, Okay, who do you say that I am? You know, uh, I imagine this was shuffled around. I imagine there was not a little uneasiness. And Peter, what do you have depicted up here? Peter says, Well, you are my Christ. Ah, here it is. The one man. Looks in other man's eyes and says, We're not looking for anyone else. You're in. That's fine. And then, what does Jesus do? He tells them to be quiet. Don't tell anybody about that. And that's where we pick up with this story as it comes to us. Tell no one was a response to that. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo, undergo great serving, excuse me, suffering at the hands of the elders of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. 
Peter took him aside and again rebuked him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and he said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Remember last week when it said this, Peter, the faith that you said didn't come to you by human beings, it was bestowed on you by God. Hi, Lord. How bad do you think he feels being called a Savior? Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone wants to become my follower, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what would profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? What will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is come with the angels in the glory of the Father, and then he will pay everyone for what he has done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I am delighted to come to you. I'm delighted to share food for the poor. I'm delighted to invite you into a mission of ministry, I think, that is very much reflecting the kingdom of God breaking into the world. Let me go back here again to this marvelous, marvelous lesson in which we stand. Jesus, when he comes and he asks, who do you say that I am? And then the statement is, you are the Christ, the one who is breaking into the world. And he says, this is the faith. Now, by saying stop, there's something powerful happening. Because in that time, people thought that the kingdom of God would come and be pushed and push out the ropes, put everything, you know, that wonderful old hymn, you know, uh, not a sword slot of clashing or roll of stirring drum, but three deeds of love and kindness, the heavenly kingdom come in way. Jesus is saying, the kingdom of God, we've got to be quiet about this because people have got to discover that it has to be coaxed out of each and every one of us. And Jesus says, I am the Savior, but I am introducing the world, the saving style of life, which is what changes the world. And when he says, take up your cross and follow me, that is it. The cross is any place the saving love goes out to undergird this life of ours and comes back with the hot stamp of the nails in his hands. Cross here is taking the love and the power that is inside that God has given to us and then willingly taking on the pain of serving and sharing. And those who will lose their life for my sake, he says, will gain it. And those who want to save their life are going to lose it. Because this is what life is about. The kingdom of God breaking into our world through deeds of love and kindness and is always the grateful response of each and every one of us to the Savior who pulls us out of the mess. Food for the poor. For 43 years, I was in parishes, basically in Ohio, and a bit in Pennsylvania, and a little bit more in Florida. But I enjoyed every part of that. But for the last three years, I have had the privilege of going all manner of places uh, and, and meeting people and seeing how God gets things done all around the United States of America, particularly in Lutheran churches, Methodist churches. Those are the ones I speak to. But food for the poor, I think, is a cross-carrying adventure that I really want to invite you into. Food for the poor for 32 years now has been blessed by God to be able to share with people around the Caribbean, 17 countries and around the Caribbean, some exceedingly poor people 
live there. I have been in two of those places, Haiti and Jamaica. I can't speak to all the rest, but if I can, I'll, I'll speak to those as I invite you to be part of it. I also want to say to you that I am part of Food for the Poor because, well, two big reasons. It's both effective and efficient. Effective. We are able to feed people for six cents a meal. Six cents. It's Caribbean diet. It is rice, it is beans, it's a bit of tilapia, and it is a bit of poultry. And it is a good diet for the Caribbean area. And, sisters and brothers, I want to tell you this. As one who put together budgets and this and that and everything for churches all over the years, I always wanted to watch and if I was going to ask you to be a good steward, I wanted to make sure that we were a good steward as well. Well, I am delighted to tell you that Food for the Poor can do all of its ministry, I mean, excuse me, all of its advertising and fundraising and administration for less than four cents out of every dollar that is given. I'm delighted to say that to you. Our stuff is say five cents so we can go back and forth, don't have to reprint everything. But it's 3.8 cents, to be very frank. That means that over 96 cents feeds, houses, sponsors hospitals, orphanages, builds houses. That's what goes on. I'd like to introduce you to one of the people that is very important to me. You have a picture of her in your bulletin. If you pull that out, I would be very appreciative. This is Washina. Washina, at the time of taking this picture, just about a year ago, was four years old. She lives in Haiti. She lives there with her mother, Jean, and her sister, Sofa. Until the earthquake that happened there, which we all saw on television, she, they lived with our father and husband. But after the earthquake, Jean lost her job. The father said, I really can't support all of you. And so they were on their own. And so Jean cobbled together what she could. She's got some metal. She put some sticks, stones up, or two big sticks up, and put some cardboard in there to try to block the winds. But as you know, whenever a hurricane blows into the Caribbean area, it may hit the United States. In 2005, it drowned in New Orleans. In 2004, we are over in Florida, got a bunch of it. But any one of those, every single one of those that comes in blows in and hits Cuba and Puerto Rico and Haiti, Jamaica. And many of them come in at about 120 miles an hour. That's a good sized storm. And when we build houses, we build houses to withstand that. But that's a bit of the story a little bit later on. But let me just stay with Lucina here. I want to tell you that because of their circumstance, the winds do blow their house flat. And during the hurricane, the, one of the last hurricanes, they tied, and this is where I got this job, they, the mother had tied her children to trees so that they would make sure they wouldn't blow away. So that meant they were on trees, but they were also having to fight off the snakes. Snakes know that that's where they've got to go as well if they're going to survive. Gracious. 
fit to give than cross carry. A forty-three dollars to feed Wachina for an entire year. An entire year. Can you help? I promise you, it's kind of cross carry that makes such a difference in the world. This envelope is here.
got a gallon of milk. Think about carrying that for two and a half hours and another one in your other hand. And you're seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve years old. How are you going to feel when you're done? And she was exhausted every day. And we were able to put in a pump for two hundred dollars. She was doing fifteen minutes. What did it take her five hours? And 3,000 other people, it was a good pump. It was a good pump to get a good strain. 3,000 other people were able to get water. That's what we could do with the gift of 200 and some dollars. Sparkling living water. The last thing I'd like to ask you, but consider it's a big gift, but hey, you catch your bread pump and water. And we were able to build houses. We were able to build houses around the Caribbean, particularly in Haiti and Jamaica, is where I'm in Guatemala, there we have them, and we can build it for $3,200. And it is a house that has got three rooms in it, well, two, yes, three rooms with the sanitation, everything is there, it's got a solar power, it's got the sanitation all in that on a concrete floor. Think about that, replacing mud floors. And then also, these houses can withstand 120 miles an hour winds because that's what you have to build if you're going to survive in the Caribbean. Yes, it's a big gift, but you know, it can be done in a monthly thing of $178. Maybe it's a gift and a legacy you want to give to somebody in your family. Maybe you as a congregation want to think about doing that. And it can be done. Uh, Teresa, I'm going to thank you very much. Up here, we're going to have about a two-minute clip from something, if you would show it right now. This is a little girl who lives in the uh, Orlando, in the Miami area, in Brian Williams Beach. Time now for tonight's Making a Difference report. This one proves you're never too young to do that. As we approach the two-year anniversary of that awful earthquake in Haiti, a young girl from Florida is showing just how much one determined person can indeed accomplish making a difference for those who still need so much help. Her story tonight from our chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyder. Rachel Wheeler may look like a typical adolescent. Even with her girlfriends, going to school dances, still makes a very big impact. But she does something most 12-year-olds don't. She worries about kids who live hundreds of miles and get a world away from her in Haiti. Rachel was just nine when she met this man, Robin the Food. He runs Florida's biggest charity, Food for the Poor, and gave a presentation about Haitian children who don't have enough to eat, don't have a place to call home. Rachel believed that was just plain wrong and vowed to help them build homes for Haiti's unsheltered. She ran big sales, asked the can at homecoming games, appealed to local businesses. $2,600 to present to Rachel tonight. Thousands of small contributions have added up to now over a quarter of a million dollars. Rachel now travels to Haiti empty-handed, delivering care packages to Haiti children who lost their school and five new classmates in the 2010 earthquake. In the small fishing village of Haiti, here too the shy young girl is a hero. It's cross-carrying. It's 
letting the kingdom of God emerge here and now. It's what God allows us to do. 